I need some traction. You need some traction. Hey everybody, Lloyd Lobo here, co-founder at Traction Cough and Boast AI. Super excited for today's session. This webinar series is brought to you by Boast AI and Launch Academy in partnership with BCF Ventures, Lazaridis Institute, and Founder Institute. Today's speaker is a digital marketing god. He's the CEO of digital marketing agency Single Grain, and Single Grain has helped companies like Amazon, Uber, and Salesforce acquire more customers. He also hosts two popular podcasts, Marketing School with Neil Patel and Growth Everywhere, which is an entrepreneurial podcast where he dissects growth levers that help businesses scale. Eric, welcome to Traction. How's it going? Thanks for having me, man. Good to see you. I'm sad that we couldn't, we couldn't do this in person, but uh, you know, we'll make do. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So let's, before you, you have a great set of slides here on top tactics that are timeless to help you grow. But before we get into that, how did you get into digital marketing? Well, uh, let's see. So this is um, the financial crisis, 2008, 2009. I just graduated and my uh, first job was a dead end job doing data entry. I was making $32,000 a year. Um, and then my friend sends me, <laughs> I was playing poker as I was um, online poker from this job. Friend sent, says, hey, check, you should check out this digital marketing thing. Um, learned, got an internship. And then from there, uh, never really looked back. And to me, it's, it's like playing a game that I enjoy every day. And word on the street is that you bought single grain at near bankruptcy for dollar for $2. And then you $2. built into a multi-million dollar company. Tell us about that journey. Yeah. So, um, I, this is funny. So those of you that know my podcast co-host Neil Patel on marketing school, he was actually, he owned 10% of the company. So I bought his shares $1 for 10%. And his partner, Heaton Shaw, who I believe has spoken at Traction, um, I bought his shares $1 for 10%. And then the rest um, were paid through the profits of the company with the contingency of uh, me not having to pay anything out if the company failed. So to me, it was lots of upside, very limited downside. So uh, highly recommend reading the book, Dundo Investor. Um, you'll understand kind of what that is. And um, so that journey... Um, Long story short, I actually made the company worse in the first year. I made, came in, made sweeping changes, didn't build rapport with anybody. We dropped all the way down to one employee. Outside accounting firm called me and said, it might, might be time to shut this down. And I was like, no, I'm just going to keep going. And then, um, you know, from there, slowly we were able to recover. Um, and then we decided to just focus completely on paid media. We were previously an SEO company. And then we just do paid media, SEO now. And we mainly serve... Um, software as a service or big tech like the Ubers to Amazons of the world. And I always took over the agency with the intention of using the cash flows to invest in other areas. Um, you know, tiny capital is a good example. Just take the cash flows and then, you know, go buy or invest in other businesses. And that's largely uh, what I'm doing now. So that is the story. Awesome. And let's, let's get right into it, man. You have slides. Let's pop them open. These are the growth marketing principles that have worked well for us um, over the years and, you know, stuff that we've learned, uh, recently as well. So as Lloyd has said, my name is Eric Sue. And then if you want more stuff like this, marketing school every day is a daily marketing podcast and you got growth everywhere. This is actually called leveling up now. And, uh, I actually don't smile as you can see. So no smiles. I'm just an angry person. Um, and then I have two companies, uh, that I focus on one single grain, which we have a CEO running and then ClickFlow is our SEO software that helps you grow your traffic while looking like a genius. Um, so here's a question for you all right now. If you're to think about, I'm assuming a lot of you are running ads on Facebook, Google, LinkedIn right now. What do you think is the number one factor to success with your ads or any of your marketing? So it can be any of these in here. Do you think it's click through rate, conversion rate, cost per click, CPA? customer acquisition or spend, or it could be anything else. Just type in the chat right now. What do you think the number one factor to success with your ads is? Um, and then what we're going to do, happy to answer questions again, um, but you know, try to keep this interactive. So let's see what you guys are saying. So Jonathan saying CPA, Laura saying CPA, um, Ehab is saying conversion rate, Eric is saying content, CPA. And by the way, guys, it doesn't have to just be the choices in here. It could be anything else because I'll tell you, um, the answer I'm going to give you might not necessarily be from here. Um, Aiden saying depends on the stage. 
George is saying revenue install rate. Okay. So we got a lot of different messages, right? So the number one factor to success with your ads is come on, go. There you go. You're creative. And so what do I mean by that? Your creative is the most important thing because it's the first thing that people see if they're, especially if they're scrolling on Facebook, or if they're watching a YouTube video, you are interrupting them. Okay. So this guy over here, Russell Brunson, he has a company called click funnels. They didn't raise any money at all. And they do about $150 million a year. And, um, you know, most of it, majority of the revenue is driven from SaaS and they have, you know, kind of courses and things like that. But his secret to success is look at his number of creatives that he's driving. And we're using Facebook ad library here. Um, and he's constantly pumping out new stuff all the time, all the time, because his mindset is, okay, how do I pattern interrupt? Because if you pattern interrupt, you get higher engagement, you get higher click through rates, and that affects all your down funnel metrics. You want to talk about your CPA. You want to talk about all this CAC and all this other stuff, you know, down funnel, you got to get the creative right first. And a lot of people, especially in tech, they do not think about the creative. It's more so I'm going to learn Google ads. I'm going to learn Facebook and then I'm good to go. But the creative piece is really, it's not easy to do. It requires, you know, people talking about customer development. You have to understand how to do customer development. You have to understand how your, your, your people are, um, your customers are thinking. And so the reason I've highlighted the 630 results is because if you think about it, when I look at most people on Facebook ad library, they're not running. The, you're lucky if you can even see five results or 10 results at a given time. So Russell Brunson here, 630 results. So he's constantly, again, cranking out new creatives all the time because, you know, yesterday's, well, today's good creative will become what tomorrow's like, it will become tomorrow's old creative and it will, it will no longer be good at pattern interrupting. So you have to constantly keep that in mind. So just to drive the point home a little further, you can see here he's writing, uh, I guess this, this, this bull. And then here's, he's speaking over here and then he's got cartoons. He's just trying a lot of different things and he knows that that's how you stay on top of the game. And that's a large reason his marketing is a large reason why click funnels is at, you know, where they're at today. Um, and so you might be asking yourself, okay, so how do I actually get good at creative? Well, one portion of creative is actually, you have to be good at maybe video. You have to be good at maybe, uh, you know, the illustration piece as well. But the one thing I think we all can learn in here, we all can get better at is copywriting. So copywriting is thinking about, okay, how can I actually get them with my words? Right? So how can I hook them with what, with one sentence first and how do I keep them, keep them enthralled? And you see a lot of these, um, we use the info marketers as an example. They use a lot of long form ads when it comes to uh, Facebook ads or maybe even on LinkedIn as well. It's long form, it's spaced out, it's easy to read. And um, it's not like a lot of, again, this is what I'm basically saying here is you can learn a lot from info marketers and then drag the, those learnings over into you know the, the, the tech world and, and kind of vice versa as well. There's, there's things to learn from both industries. But I think the, the info marketers, what they do really well is they know how to attack emotions and they know how to um, really drive, you know, they know how to attack emotions and drive conversions because they're good at copywriting, they're good at creative. So one thing I think you can use to make your life a lot easier is using headline formulas. And most copywriters do this. Not a lot of people think about, oh, to actually become a good copywriter, all you really have to do is use formulas, not just headline formulas, like what I'm showing you on the screen right now, but formulas when it comes to ads that actually get you. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a second. But if you look at this one over here, um, you can see on the very left column, you have a headline type. And then in the middle, you have a formula. And on the very right, you have an example. So let's start with this one over here. 13 ways to benefit. Here's the formula. 13 surefire roads, paths, ways to benefit, right? So, and then right here, you just follow this, you just insert, and then it gets, then it, then it just works, right? So 13 surefire ways to stay energized in the morning, or maybe even this one over here, uh, acquire a benefit quickly with new methods. So acquire a high ticket client in two weeks with the steps method, okay? So you don't need to try to reinvent the wheel here because a lot of times we're, we're just, we're human beings and we know there are proven formulas out there. You don't need to try to go crazy, right? 
oftentimes people are like, oh, you know, when it comes to SEO, we, you have to publish new content. You have to publish unique content all the time. The reality is Google's uh, ex head of web spam, Matt Cutts, has even said this. He's like, look, you know, when we're talking about unique content, maybe only 20 to 30% of a piece needs to be unique. The other piece, the other, the other, you know, portion, we're talking 70% of, of the content, um, it can be, you know, rehashed or so. So, you know, we're human beings again. We, it's not like we've evolved too much from the last, I don't know, what's called 50 to 100 years. Um, we're driven by emotion. So look at what actually resonates with you and then put it into a swipe file. Uh, more on that in one second. So we've talked about a template. So how prospects can achieve desirable benefit this year. Um, so how SaaS founders can achieve exponential growth this year. Um, talked about that, but here's an example. This website is called swiped.co. And look at the headline over here. Good headline. Reverse engineered marketing and copywriting inspiration. So this is where marketers and copywriters go to get inspired and learn the secret psychology of top marketing promotions. Now, this is more, you know, you're pulling newsletters, you're pulling sales letters here, but, and you're pulling old stuff too. In, in, in many cases, you might be pulling from, um, there's Ogilvy's newsletters in here, so great marketer, um, but you can even see landing pages in here as well. And they'll actually analyze what's going on. So then you can save whatever files resonate with you, and then you can take that inspiration to your next landing pages, okay? To your next ad copy, to your next newsletters. Again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And this word right here, copywriters, info marketers use it. It's basically swiping, okay? So if you see an ad that you like on Facebook, you swipe it, you save it, right? And I actually have a folder for Instagram where I save ads that I like. I do the same thing for Facebook as well. Um, and I'll take a screenshot of a headline that gets me and I'll put them into a, or I'll just like cut and paste it and I'll put it into an Apple note, for example. But that's the idea. And then when you're ready to, to get creative, it's like, I'm, I'm ready to you know, kind of change my mindset. Well, you know what? I'm going to go to my swipe file. I don't need to reinvent the wheel because it puts too much onus on me to have to do that. Look at what resonates with you, what actually pattern interrupts you because that's today's pattern interrupt, right? And you got to jump on it quickly because, you know, Russell Brunson, what happens with him is everyone co copies him, right? They know that he's really good at pattern interrupting. So he's going to copy and then he has to stay ahead of the game too. Um, he's even said this before too. I had him on the, the leveling up podcast. He's like, you know what? Um, you know, Eric, at any given time throughout the year, we run six different offers, okay? So you have the ads, that's one piece of it, but the offer, what are you running them to, okay? So let's use uh, Lloyd as an example. He might have, um, you know, different types of offerings with Boast.ai. Um, so, you know, for, for one second, it might be, you know, get, get your R&D credits. And then for, for another offer, it might be something else. So the whole idea here is that he's not only rotating his ads, but throughout the year, he's rotating different offers that might be enticing to people. And if you're able to do that, uh, what, you know, people tend to get banner blindness too, right? They're going to get offer blindness as well. So if they keep seeing your offer over and over and you're not switching it up every two to three months or so, people get bored of it. So what Russell Brunson does is he will swap the offers and he'll rotate what an old offer, he might bring it back a year later. Okay. So the whole idea here is you're constantly rotating and you're constantly trying to do pattern interrupts. Um, and so here's another example. So I mentioned earlier, I like saving stuff to my Instagram. Sometimes I save landscape stuff, so that's not relevant, but what actually gets my attention? So everyone has a wealth number. This came from Bloomberg. I'm like, Oh crap, this is good. This actually got my attention. Um, or this carousel over here on Instagram, or I just like these, um, you know, data visualizations as well. And then on the very left, you know, these are a lot of ads that I saved on Facebook. So you got to get in the habit of saving stuff that stops you in your tracks. Okay. Cause that's when you know, you've seen something good. And another thing that I do is if I'm writing copy, if I have a long form, uh, ad, or if I have a landing page, I'm going to use a sentiment analysis tool. So Grammarly actually does this a little bit, but, um, you can just Google sentiment analysis and then um, just type your copy in and then it'll tell you if your copy is positive or negative. In general, vast majority of the time, I'm trying to go for positive, okay? I'm trying to get it to resonate with people. Positive is gonna get more engagement as well. Get more engagement, your, 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 your CPCs uh, decrease, that, may, that, that goes all the way down funnel. And hopefully um, you're getting a good you know, CPA 
or you know CAC, whatever you're you're trying to optimize for. But using a sentiment analysis tool, um, and even using a tool like Hemingway to kind of help you simplify your copy. Again, not enough people do this um, in in today's world. It's just taking classic marketing methodologies and um, you know inserting it into you know modern the modern the modern marketing that we're doing. These are the top copywriting books that have been recommended to me. And I've also read these books as well. So breakthrough advertising, if you're to pick one book from all of these, uh, that would be the book to get because it's, it was written in, I believe in the 1920s or so. And a couple years ago, the book was out of print. So um, I, I think I paid like four or $500 for the book worth it. And it's worth, it's a timeless advertising book, but it, more so more than anything, it talks about human psychology and copywriting. So read this book. You can actually get it now. Someone bought the rights and you can buy it for $125. So just Google breakthrough advertising, pick it up. Um, you guys are all here to, 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 to grow faster. So I think it's, it's money well spent. If, if you're looking to do it, I don't get paid an affiliate commission or anything. Um, so breakthrough advertising is great. The 16 word sales letter. So this is written by a Brazilian named Evaldo um, Albuquerque, um, I think. And, um, so this company that he works for is called Agora and they are very much, um, an info product company. They're a newsletter company. They do over a billion a year in sales and they're well known in the, um, in the info marketing world, but more than anything, this guy's one of their best copywriters. And so he's got this 16 word sales letter. I thought it was a great book. One of my favorite reads uh, this year. So check that book out. It's, it's not that long either. It just basically tells you how to write a great sales letter. Um, and then that will actually translate into your landing pages and then you're going to get better conversion rates and then you're going to grow faster, right? Cause that's what you're here for. And the boron letters is written by Gary Halpert, popular copywriter. So popular that he got thrown into jail because his copy was too good at converting, but he was just using it for the wrong reason. So obviously I think we're all here. We're, we're all doing ethical things. Um, and he wrote this book for his son when he was in jail and it was all about copywriting, all about kind of life lessons, things like that. But great book, uh, the Gary Halpert letters, those are great as well. So, you know, kind of same guy. And then Ben Settle, he's got a newsletter called email players and it just talks about copywriting and just um, email marketing in general. So those two kind of go hand in hand. So just a couple of recommendations for you over here, but breakthrough advertising would be my favorite of the book. Email still works. Um, the nine word email. So this one's really simple. I learned this from a copywriter named Dean Jackson. And the best example that he has is thinking about, so he used to be in real estate and he used to have a friend uh, that sold yachts. So if you're selling yachts, you're probably selling yachts for 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred million dollars. Okay. It's not an easy transaction. So if I go to Lloyd's yacht website, uh, he might have a yacht website. I don't know. But if I go to Lloyd's yacht website, I'm like, okay, probably not looking to buy right now, but I'll opt into your email list. Okay. So, cause I want to, you know, see the, the, the hottest yachts and maybe, maybe I'm not ready to buy right now. Maybe I'm ready to buy in four months or so. Well, the whole idea here is that if I've shown, if I've raised my hand a little bit, um, let's say for my agency, someone opted in for a free consultation, but they re weren't ready to take action. So the whole idea here is every 90 days or so you send a nine word email. Okay. So I might say, Hey Lloyd, were you still interested in growing your SEO traffic? Let's say they opted in uh, for SEO free consultation, right? Um, you just ask that. And it's simple. Like your email engagement is going to be, it, it's going to be good because people are replying to it and the open rate is going to be high too. It's like, you know, a quick question might be the, the headline or, um, you know, so, something simple like that. And here's the thing. The open rate is not bad. 50%. The response rate is really high. 20% positive or negative. And those of you that, you know, have sales organizations, you know, that your SDRs typically you're aiming for about 10% or so. Um, maybe if you're world-class, you're aiming for even, even above that, but 10% response rate is pretty good. This is 20%. And we've closed multiple six, seven uh, figure annual deals, just doing this nine word email. Just, so you just, you know, every, every 90 days, put in this nine word email, make it simple, make it easy to reply. And then, um, you know, ho hopefully you get a deal done because Dean Jackson's story is the yacht, his friend that sold yachts actually got a hundred million dollar deal done by using this nine word email. Okay. So you can use it for, you know, typically, I mean, if people are opting in, if they're interested in something and if it's longer sales cycle, higher ticket item, perfect to use a nine word email. Okay. Going on the channel. So, you know, with the, the marking school podcast, um, that I do with Neil, um, you know, we, 
actually as of last month, we surpassed 1.4 million downloads a month. So it, it's continuing to grow. And um, that's something we're, we're very grateful for. Um, but the problem with that and the, the big problem is with podcasting, it's hard for us to diversify because it's like, okay, you know, with podcasting, it's only audio. Okay. So when Neil and I right now, the way we're doing it is we actually record video kind of similar to this. We actually do it over zoom and then we'll, we'll, we'll hit all the podcast channels and then we'll hit, um, we'll hit YouTube. And then we'll also go live on LinkedIn. We'll go live on Twitter. We'll go live on these, these other channels too. But the whole idea here is we're taking this one, you know, originally it was only on Apple. It was audio only. Um, we were taking this audience and we're trying to blow it up even more. So you don't necessarily need to have a big audience like this. I'm just saying that, you know, as you get bigger, as you get more scale, um, you should think about how to diversify because, you know, oftentimes we'll think about, okay, you know, if we do this video, let's say this, this, uh, session over here, we're going for an hour. Okay. Well, what's to say we can't take, you know, a lot of the, the things I'm talking about, why can't we take maybe five, 10, 15 different pieces or kind of core topics and convert them into audio for podcast? And can we make them into shorter videos as well? Put them onto YouTube. So maybe five, 10 minutes each. I recommend 10 minutes because you want more watch time on YouTube. But the whole idea here is we call this content sprouting. So what you do is you have a seed piece of content. So again, this webinar session, and this is the seed piece and we can convert it, chop it up into multiple audio pieces, multiple video pieces. And then what you can do, you can go to jobs.problogger.net, hire some writers. And then you basically have, you know, 40 to 50% of a blog post done. Just have the writer finish it off, do more research, put some, uh, you know, you know, put some images in there, um, put some links in there, make a blog post look really good, you know, make it a, you know, 1500 to 2,500 words or so. And then what you do afterwards is you pollinate the piece. So you promote it. Okay. So for, for us, Twitter ads has, has been working really well. We took one of our old pieces, we threw it up on Twitter. We spent like fifty hundred dollars a day or some, something like that. And, um, you know, that led to an upsell. And so, you know, think about it. There's a couple of things here. Are you sprouting your content right now? Are you making the most of what you have? Because the idea here is that you don't go buy a car, drive it off the lot, and then you're done with it, right? You want to make the most of the car. At least if you're cheap like me, you want to do that, right? And, um, and then what you want to do is you want to make the most of everything you're doing. So you want to promote it, obviously, because you didn't spend, you know, hours and hours creating this wonderful piece of content, and then you're not going to promote it. Like, that's not good. Because I'll tell you, like, after this, um, you know, um, I'm going to reach out to Lloyd. I'll be like, hey, can I have the, the recording of this? And then we're actually going to chop it up for social and, and, and make it look good and all that. Um, but, and then we're, we might even boost the content too, but you want it to maximize reach. You want to make the most of your content. And then afterwards you can think about monetization and maybe we can talk about that another time, but I can tell you with our single grain blog, um, you know, we can easily, you know, use it to drive more leads or we can make it an affiliate website. There's a lot that we can do from it for it, uh, from an SEO perspective. So there's a lot of games that you can play within here. There's a game within a game, but, um, just think about first, how can you seed sprout? then pollinate and then harvest, uh, then monetize. Right. But first, first, what you got to do is you got to bring value first. That's how you can do it. This is just an example. Um, you know, I have a book coming out next year called leveling up. And, uh, so we've converted my YouTube channel to be focused on, you know, business is a game, you know, learn how to master it here. And then we just put our videos here. But what we do is we take those videos. You can see the same, um, type of, well, here's a video, here's a video, here's one. I'm just really angry here. And we basically repurpose it to Instagram and you can see Instagram TV. This is for the feed. Um, we'll take these carousels over here. These are basically the ones that you can swipe. Um, the engagement's way higher when you do a carousel on Instagram and when you do a carousel on LinkedIn. So then we'll take these carousels and I'll pop it over to LinkedIn. Um, and so we're constantly content sprouting and in Slack, you know, we used to have this, um, a daily breakdown. Here's the output 25, pieces a day, right? So LinkedIn, IG, LinkedIn ep or leveling up episode. Um, but it's just a lot. And now we've gotten it up to about 50 or 60 a day. So we're trying to get it even higher. Maybe we can get it to a hundred a day because the idea here, the name of the game is you're just trying to get people's attention. It's as many touch points as possible. So what I'm aiming for when it comes to social media is reach. I don't care about anything else, anything else but reach, right? Because 
as long as I know I'm reaching people like Lloyd or reaching people like you, eventually there's going to come a time where you're just like, um, Hey, like maybe I can reach out to Eric for some additional help and maybe I can put you in touch with somebody, um, or, or help you even further. But you know, my content is all designed to a it's to articulate my thoughts and then B also to, you know, obviously educate people as well. And they decide what they want to do with it. And hopefully, you know, make a, make a bigger impact on, on, you know, helping people and their businesses if they have a business. But um, that's that. And I don't know, Lloyd, if you have anybody that talks about, um, I, I'm sure you probably have some people that talk about mergers and acquisitions. I'm going to talk about that, that from the context of um, using it as a marketing engine. So, you know, people talk about growth through acquisitions and it used to sound scary to me. There's a lot of great books around it. Um, there's buy then build love that book. Um, but you know, one thing I learned from, um, a guy that we had speak at one of our events, uh, Roland Frazier is he's actually got a system for buying businesses for $0 out of pocket. And we just, I just, I, I'm not quite as good at uh, $0, but I can tell you what, I, I bought a company for $2, right. Out of pocket. So the whole idea here is when you're looking to buy something, maybe I might see a website. I might use a tool like Hrefs, um, which is an SEO tool. Um, you can use Uber Suggest as well. Um, that's Neil's free SEO tool. But you can look for websites that have a high domain authority. Maybe they're generating good revenue. Um, and maybe your website is smaller. I'll, I'll give you an example. So if I'm Lloyd, I have Boast.ai. Um, and let's say it's a brand new website. It's not driving a ton of traffic right now. Well, I might go look for other, let's say, um, you know, because his business focus around R and D tax credits, helping businesses grow. I might go find a business website or a, um, let's just call it a financial website that has been around for years and maybe they're struggling right now. They're, they're not generating much revenue, but they have a lot of links. They rank high for a lot of keywords. And so what I might do is I might acquire that website and then redirect everything to boast.ai. And then that way, whenever I publish content on boast.ai, I now have the domain authority, right? So without going too much into the weeds, that's just how strong your website is. And so that the, this website acquisition will make my website a lot stronger. And when I publish things, it's just going to rank in Google and I'm going to drive more leads. I'm going to drive more customers, right? So growth through acquisitions. What you can basically do is um, let's say I want to buy a website. I can do seller financing. I can do a deferred down payment. I can do milestones. I can do a carve out. So what do I mean by that? So a deferred down payment, let's say um, I'm buying a website from Lloyd. Well, I'll be like, okay, um, sure. I'll pay you a million dollars, but um, you know what? I'm not going to pay you for 30 days. Okay. So I want a deferred down payment because maybe I want to, I want to a way for me to come up with the cash or, you know, you can do the seller financing, which those of you that know m a it's just basically it's, it's a loan through through Lloyd and it could be over 12, 24, 36 months or whatever. Um, you can do earnouts and then you can do a carve out. So let's say, you know, Lloyd has, um, he's like, Oh, well, um, I have also these, these other assets within the business. This one's worth $500,000. This one's worth another million dollars or so. Um, I'll be like, great. It's not valuable to me. So what I might do afterwards is I could carve it out and sell it, or I can just say, Hey Lloyd, you keep these and let's bring the, the acquisition price down. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but, um, you know, by doing a combination of these tactics. And I really recommend if you want to learn more about it, you can check out Roland Frazier's, um, he has a program called Epic, um, but you can basically take a look at it and you'll, he reveals all the different tactics that you can combine and choose. And, you know, um, that to me was very eye opening. And so for me, I'm just like, but from a marketing perspective, how can I buy businesses? How can I go buy revenue? Or how can I do um, an SEO arbitrage where a website's stronger than mine and I can use it? There's just a lot of different ways that I can play around with it. So, you know, let's just say you own a pet SaaS business. It does 3 million in annual recurring revenue. You spend a lot on advertising. So you're like, okay, I'm tired of spending money on advertising. So what you do is you say, okay, I'm looking to buy, you know, some pet websites that get over 500,000 visits a month from Google. Okay. So what ends up happening is you find a website that's doing 1 million in revenue, $200,000 of that is profit. So how do you put everything together? So $200,000 in profit, let's say the multiple on that website might be three X on profit. So $600,000. Okay. So example transaction, at least in the United States is you can put 10% down. So 60 K and get the rest financed by the seller. And then what you can do is you can defer the down payment for 30 to 45 days and then look to sell off some of the assets 
you end up paying zero dollars out of pocket. So um, I do this, you know, I do this on my own. You know, right now I'm looking to buy an uh, SEO uh, SaaS business right now, but I don't think you need to be a genius or an expert to do this. Yes, you definitely need your tax, um, your tax attorneys, um, CPAs to help you with this. Obviously, hopefully you have some people that are experienced with M and A, but um, you know, I think you know, just doing some studying and, and, and getting your feet wet, I think you're going to be able to grow a lot faster if you can acquire. Um, I think a lot of people listening to this right now, it's just, you know, they struggle when it comes to SEO. They struggle when it comes to traffic, but there's a big arbitrage opportunity in terms of just going out there, buying websites that are doing well in terms of traffic, just under, under monetized or just the business doesn't run well. You take it over, you plug it in with your business, uh, one plus one equals three, and you're able to grow a lot faster. So again, you don't need to be a fancy or big investor to do these types of deals. And uh, yeah, DM me on Instagram at Eric Osu. You can also email me, eric at singlegrain.com or follow me on the Twitters. And uh, Single Grain is the website. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for listening to me talk fast. That was amazing, Eric. I loved it. I learned a ton. I took some notes here for, for myself. Uh, couple let's let's go slow on some of the tools what was the url for the top facebook ads and the url for the blog yeah so facebook here i'm gonna i'm gonna drop this in chat right now so facebook.com slash ads slash library oh, pro blogger okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, jobs.problogger.net i think that's what it is that's what you use or what yeah, we use that to hire writers and you can hire, we've hired writers that like one time it got really specific. It was like, can we hire someone that knows how to write about machine tools? And we have found two people that have actually written complete guides on it. Uh, how would you find those websites for acquisition? How do you know it has high SEO um, kind of thing? Yeah. So the best way I think is using, again, using a tool like Ahrefs. So I'll drop that into chat. Um, and you can go find websites. Let's say uh, Boast.ai. I might go type Boast.ai in there. I'll look for competitors. I'll look for people that are ranking for keywords that I want to rank for. Um, or I might say this, um, Lloyd, you know who your top three competitors are. So I'll just drop them into the competitive tool and then they'll show me all the keywords they're ranking for and they'll show me other websites. So it's really good for competitive analysis. And then you yourself, you would make a, a acquisition list of maybe 30 to 50 websites you want to acquire. And then you go out, reach out, say, hey, I'm, um, hey, Lloyd, I'm really interested in uh, potentially partnering up. Don't say I want to invest in your company because that gets people on the defensive, at least from my experience. And you do that. And, um, you know, you get people to reply, you have a conversation and then it's like, oh, hey, have you, um, have you actually thought about selling before? And you take the conversation, you know, even deeper. You can do that. There's a lot of brokers out there. I think you and I know the same people. There's, you know, FE International. Uh, microacquire.com just came out. I love that website because there's a lot of SEO um, tools that I can buy or marketing tools I can buy. So, um, but in general, it's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Have you acquired any such company and like help it grow? Yeah, I mean, Single Grain's an example. Um, yeah. So, you know, Single Grain was basically negative when I took it over, but it's, 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 it is where it's at right now. And the, comp the, the SEO company, SaaS tool I'm trying to buy right now, they're not huge. I mean, they're doing you know, 2.1 million a year in, in revenue, but, um, you know, plugging that in with our audience, our domain authority, and just overall, I think one plus one becomes three. So we're, we're pretty far into the negotiations, negotiations on that right now. And then when you buy those, do you buy them on a revenue multiple or like, uh, yeah, it's on a, this one would be on a revenue multiple just cause, um, the bottom line hasn't looked as good the last two years. So smaller revenue multiple yeah you acquire this domain what is day one week one week five week 10 look like yeah <clears throat> so i'll give you my answer and i'll give you a, sim a simple one that if you guys are interested um there's a website called tr um a, a facebook sorry facebook group it's a slack group called traffic think tank and they actually have a, a module in there on buying uh, websites for SEO purposes and exact the exact plan that you should be following. This guy's uh, Matthew Barbie. He works at uh, HubSpot right now. And so, you know, when thinking about acquiring a website, um, let's use single grain as an example. Or no, 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 no. I, I have a better example. There's so I'm a minor, minority owner in this one uh, affiliate website, and we we actually bought we actually bought a website, 
and um, we are you talking about business or website? I just want to make sure I got the question. Yeah, let's let's start with a website. Okay. I'm going to use my senior living website actually as an example. So, okay, this one website was wank, ranking for the keyword senior living and um, it was number five. And at the time we had a, a, um, a site which is now defunct, but we wanted to rank for those keywords. We knew same thing. This, this, had the, this, this site had the rankings that we wanted. It had a domain authority that we wanted. So we use hrefs and we looked at the domain authorities. It was way higher than ours. It was like on a scale of one out 100, it was maybe like a 65 or so. And ours was maybe like a 20. Um, so much higher than ours. So basically we bought, we reached out to the guy and we said, Hey, we're interested in, in buying your website. Um, and then basically what happened was, um, you know, he got a little defensive first and then finally he's like, okay, yeah, I'm willing to sell it. And we started going back and forth. He came up with a number. We came up with a number. We settled on, it wasn't high at all. We bought it for $11,000. And then we basically redirected. We did a 301 redirects from, from the website we took over to ours. And then within two weeks, we started ranking number six or seven for the keyword senior living. And then we shot up a little more. Um, unfortunately, that business didn't work out. But from an SEO perspective, it was a win. So just think about, again, you're, you're arbitraging at that point. You, you really have two options. If you have no content on your website, but you have high domain authority, you can go to a website that has maybe hundreds or thousands of articles and you can go buy the content and put it on your website, right? That's one thing. The second one is more so um, you have little authority. Um, you have a new business, go buy a business, redirect it and boom. You're, you're, you're good to go. You don't have to wait a year or two years to get out of the, the, the quote unquote Google sandbox um, where they kind of like, you know, wait for you to, you know, build up your authority a little bit. And then um, the senior living, living uh, project that you did, why didn't it work out? I'm curious. Is it <clears throat> yeah. So here's what happened. Um, <clears throat> a, I was working with um, two of my high school friends. So we, we, we all have, um, you know, different work styles. And um, B, it, it, it was a very capital intensive type of thing because we had to hire salespeople um, and we were basically driving the, the business model was tough because we had to figure out lead generation and then we had to give those leads to the salespeople. And then um, at the same time, you know, the salespeople then would have to refer the leads out to multiple senior living companies and then we would get paid a commission. So um, we just didn't think things through. And I think this was probably when I was like 26 years old, 27 years old. So that's what happened. You still look 26, 27, man. The Asian genes. Thank you. <laughs> um, I want to dive a little bit into like sequencing and nurturing. Um, how do you guys, because you, you do a lot of content, right? You got like the marketing school with Neil and then you got your growth everywhere. They sign up. Uh, these are live events you do and then you turn them into podcasts. Walk us through your journey in terms of taking a piece of content, um, like a podcast maybe, or like a live webinar like this, and then turning it all the way into your business, like a lead for your business. What do you do? Yeah, um, let's see. The best example would be, um, well, I'll tell you how we do it with content right now. So Neil and I, so this Friday, we're gonna record again, or actually, Thursday. So we're going to record Thursday. We're going to do a zoom. It's one hour. It's a one hour session. And we cover, usually we cover 10 topics in that one hour because it's on video. My, um, we call it my brand team. So my brand team will then jump on it. They'll chop it up into Instagram TV. They'll put a caption on top of it. And those of you that do not have that resource, you can use a service like repurposehouse.io. I'll drop that in the chat. Um, and they'll chop up content for you for IGTV, for your stories. Now you can put on a LinkedIn stories as well. Um, and so we just try to take one piece and make it into 40 or 50 pieces. And, um, you know, a piece could be like just a story or it could be like a little Instagram feed post. But the idea is that you have someone constantly on it and then we're just checking in every week. Um, we use a tool called Sprout Social and we check on the um, engagement metrics and we check on the reach metrics just to see um, if we're doing well. And um, we just share information in Slack like, hey, this post has done really well. This is what did well in the last... Uh, seven days or so. And we just constantly iterate, but it's, what I would say is it's, it's taken us a while to get to this point. I would say what sets us apart from the past was that our communication is a lot more frequent. 
um, before we would communicate once a week, but now it's become more of like a daily check-in, daily stand-up type of thing because th you take it a lot more seriously uh, when you do that. And in terms of business, um, the content, you, the funny thing is when people come into like a, let's say Uber comes into single grain, um, they don't see just one piece of content. It's multiple pieces. Like I've seen, they're like, oh, I've seen your YouTube. I've also seen your podcast too. I've seen your Instagram. It's multiple touch points. And, you know, with marketing, they used to say, oh, it's the rule of seven. They got to see you seven times before taking an action. I actually think it's maybe the rule of 14 or the rule of 21 now because attention is so disparate. So now that's why I'm like reach is so important because everyone's attention is so, um, so spread out. Where does email play into all of this? Because you talked a lot about social, Instagram, TikTok, but like you also said that email still converts. Like how do you fit email sequencing into this? Email to me is probably one of the most important channels. And I think too many people neglect it um, because you, email is a situ situation where I can say, hey, like come buy my stuff or hey, we got an offer for you. Um, it's tougher to do it on, on social because people are just there to kind of hang out. But email is where I can say, I got an announcement. And other than that, probably my ratio is maybe four to one where I provide value versus ask for something. And even when we ask for something, it's really light. It's like, hey, can you like come check out this video? So um, as long as I, the trick with email is this, you have to get people to look forward to the next email. Otherwise, it's not interesting to be on your, your list. So how do you constantly hook them to the next event, to the next event, to the next event? And um, that's why, you know, you have brands like, um, or newsletters like Morning Brew or um, The Hustle, they get you to look forward to the next email because it's interesting. What email tool do you use? I got an email this morning. <laughs> yeah, we use, uh, we use Drip. Um, Drip's good for e-commerce. We just, it's switching costs. We've been too lazy to switch to anything else. And then um, we use Outreach for sales emails. And what does your sales sequence look like? And how does, how, how does your sales team tie all of this stuff you're doing, right? So like effectively, like me, I run, I co-host Traction. We do two webinars a week. We do a dinner every other month and we do a big conference and you've been to it. Um, and, and huge uh, sort of database. We have like 60,000 subscribers. Yeah. But like, you know, the big challenge is how does a sales team leverage this brand? Like, so like, like boast effectively, what we do is we automate government incentives for R&D. Right. But like companies need more than R and D incentives. They need how to grow their business. And so we partnered with launch Academy and started traction as a way to help entrepreneurs grow and succeed. Um, because that's our mission, but we have all this content. Now, how do I tie that closer from a sales perspective? Yeah. So we have this customer data platform over here and this is called whole.io. Um, I'm trying to find out where I actually have some emails. So add an attribute. So what's uh, contains any value. Here we go. Okay. We'll just do this. Oh, check this out. So someone from IDEO, which is a very popular agency. Um, so they looks like they're on our email list. So they checked out, we rank really well for SEO techniques and we get a lot of traffic for that keyword. Um, and so this person opted in. And so I can see this person's behavior. Um, typically it'll show me like which pages um, she visited, but in this case, I'm not seeing a timeline, but um, you should be able to see what she's interested in, how many times she visited and your salespeople can use this as ammo. Um, and so what our sales team is trying to do now is look for our current clients. So let's say, uh, you know, NASDAQ or Uber or, or whatever um, they're looking at their reading other content on our website for services that they might not have right now. So our sales team might reach out and be like, Hey, like we noticed you looking at this, here's some additional content, by the way, let us know if you want to chat on it. We're happy to talk about it. Cause it's something that we do as well. Um, but the idea here is that we're diving deeper and we're weaponizing the data that we have um, because our data is so disparate. Like one second, we might have HubSpot, we have intercom, we have, we use outreach. There's all these tools, but a tool like this, will put it all in one. This is not the best visualization, but you can see, I'm enriching who they are. I didn't even know I had this director of marketing on my list right now. Um, so anyway, we want to make sure this is a GDPR compliance. I guess I'm going to stop sharing it. <laughs> what is, what is that tool called? <clears throat> Hold.io. So here I'll drop it into chat. So you can use segment 
or you can use whole, but the whole idea here is not enough people. If you have at least 50,000 visits coming to your site per month and you have higher ticket um, items that you're trying to sell, I, I think it would be great for you to, to take advantage of a tool like um, whole.io because again, you're making the most of the data that you're already putting the hard work into. And then data from there feeds into all your drip campaigns and your uh, basically your content sprouting and, and promotion. I'll give you an example. I mean, we have, if you come from, let's say you, you're visiting from uh, Coca-Cola, for example, what, what our tool does is if two unique IP addresses from Coca-Cola hit our website, we will automatically use Clearbit and, and find four people from their marketing team um, and then it'll automatically drop them into a sales sequence based on the content that they visited. Right. So that's like a, that's like an automated sales team for you. And um, you just, I, right now we just have a copywriter on it that just constantly iterates on it and just makes the, the copy better. So our open rates go higher. Awesome. Now let's say, let's walk backwards to like, say you have a website, you have no traffic. What is the best way to build an email list strategy? And, and build that traffic, <clears throat> honestly, traffic and then you get email, right? Honestly, right now, I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure you subscribe to a couple of sub stacks, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, that guy, Lenny. Yeah. It's good stuff, dude. I mean, uh, so, you know, here, I'll, I'll just share my screen real quick, just so everyone gets some context. This is really good stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, on product market fit, how these consumer apps got their first 1000 users. I think right now, if you've got really good stuff to say, you create a newsletter, it could be a sub stack, you could just use uh, MailChimp or something like that. But the whole idea is your content's so good, you could actually start to monetize and drive paid traffic to opt into that newsletter. And then you can collect sponsorships, things like that. <clears throat> and then that pays for itself. And then you drive it to whatever else you have. So I was actually trying to buy in a marketing newsletter two months ago, they wouldn't sell. And they're, they're doing well. And we're just like, okay, we'll probably just do it ourselves then. But the whole idea is your, your newsletter is so damn good. You do it every day. The, the hustle does it. Morning Brew does it. They, do, they all do, um, they both do over eight figures a year. Why not do that? Similar to the community that you've built. And then just, you know, just keep driving more email signups because now you have, you can actually tie an earning per, uh, per opt-in. Um, so, yeah. What, what is Lenny's website? What the, the Substack called? <clears throat> it's um, Lenny Rachitsky dot com let me drop that in the chat I drop that drop that awesome your, your, uh, your room's so good at dropping links in the chat i've never seen that before this is awesome right people are in it they're engaged and and i like it because we're doing this twice a week people are super engaged they know what they want this is great awesome. what is the metric that lets you know you're rotating enough or not enough creatives on facebook and instagram so I think if you're running ads, it's very simple. So for us, we have a daily standup for one of our offers, which is uh, it, it teaches people how to grow or start their consulting business. And ideally they're doing like 50K a year or so. But the whole deal with that is um, every day we get on the standup, it's 9, 9 a.m., it's 15 minutes. One of the things, we, the key things we look at is what's the click-through rate? Because if the click-through rate drops below 1%, we know we're in trouble. So now we're at about 2% or higher. We used to be at about 0.4% uh, or so. Um, and we've constantly iterated and now, now we're seeing the benefits. And all our costs are like way in line before we're paying way too much for leads. So, so mostly you're saying you spend a lot of time on creative, on rotating the creative. Any sort of uh, sources to create good creative? Because I mean, that's the hardest part for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think creating a swipe file for things that resonate with you. That's great. Um, if you're looking to do, um, video creative, there's, uh, I'll drop this in the chat, but there's jumpcut.com and they're, they were, they're, they're a YC company, but they, now they've pivoted completely to focus on creating cool videos. And you can see on their website, um, if you want to pay for that. And then there's also, um, God, I forgot my other friend's company, but he does videos for a lot cheaper. Um, ultimately though, I think it's going to have to be on, on you, especially if you're on a budget right now. Um, yeah. Go to Fiverr. <laughs> find, Go to Fiverr. Fiverr is great too. Fiverr is great. And find, find yeah. some folks there. Yeah. Um, are there any tools that can automate content sprouting or make the process easier? Yeah. So I just, I put it in a little earlier, but it's a uh, repurposehouse.io. I think so, it's repurposehouse.com. 
Is it? Yeah, I think the IO is dead. It, it's repurposehouse.com. You're right. Yeah, it used to be that IO. Wow, you're faster than me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they, they will chop up things for you. It's like 250 bucks or so, 500 bucks or so. Maybe the price has gone down. They, they do a decent job. I think eventually you want to get to the point where you can hire someone to just chop things up for you. Um, so yeah. Any online copywriting course suggestions? How do you get better at copywriting? Yeah. Um, there's one called increase.academy and Jennifer, um, the jump cut website, I guess it's just not working right now, but you know, just bookmark it. They'll be back. Um, increase.academy is one. It's a little, if you pick up the course, it's a little janky. Um, because it's like, they'll have like these weird big images, but the, the concepts are pretty good. I would just recommend reading, um, breakthrough advertising for starters and then, um, kind of go from there. Fantastic, man. I learned a ton. This was great. Thanks everyone for joining us. I need some traction.